Lately, I thought I was overdoing quotations from the book. I'd never had so vivid a recollection for the word until the world changed. I'd found time to read the scriptures once more in the new era, and now the word stayed with me, perhaps because the altered world made the tales of the book seem more vivid. The original Mormons were condemned not only for taking multiple wives, a behavior that might have been cause for sympathy instead of resentment. What upset other Americans of the 19th century was a claim that God would reveal a whole new history to newly chosen saints. The concept of Latter-day Saints was more offensive to the Christian majority of that time than any personal behavior or economic consequences. My favorite Bible passage was uh, John 21:25, the end of the gospel, according to St. John, and it should have been the perfect shield against such prejudice, but most Christians pay little attention to the word. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. They liked those words just fine in theory. Practice was something else again. The portions where the Book of Mormon disagrees with established Christian practices didn't help either. People got really upset when they were told they were not merely wrong, but diabolically wrong on the subject of baptism. Hell. Arlene and I were about to go back into hell. We were trying to save living babies from burning in the hell on earth. She was a good friend and comrade. I liked her a lot and hoped I would not witness her death. But since becoming bold about her sinful interest in me, she was making me uncomfortable. I would find her a lot easier to deal with if I weren't tempted by her. <sighs> or if she would consent to... Oh, Jesus... Give me strength. Am I really ready to contemplate Holy Union? I grimaced. It was a very big step. A life commitment. And I was too chicken to think about it yet. Hell, I didn't feel much older than Jill. My soul was troubled because I did desire Arlene. A verse from Nephi kept running through my mind. Like a public service announcement. O oh Lord, I have trusted in Thee, and I will trust in Thee forever. I will not put my trust in the arm of flesh, for I know that cursed is he that putteth his faith in the arm of flesh. Yea, cursed is he that putteth his trust in man, or maketh flesh his arm. A buck for your thoughts, Arlene said, standing very close to me. We were taking our first rest stop in an alley. Lately, I was coming to feel safer in alleys than in open spaces. I was remembering a passage from the book. You want to share it with me? She asked. I looked deep into her bloodshot eyes, the prettiest sight in the world. And there was no mockery or sarcasm. I wasn't about to tell her how hard I was trying to resist temptation. And that right now I spelled sin beginning with a scarlet letter A. But there was an earlier passage from the second book of Nephi that spoke directly to any warrior's heart. I quoted it instead. O oh Lord, wilt thou make way for mine escape before mine enemies? Wilt thou make my path straight before me? Wilt thou not place a stumbling block in my way? but that thou wouldst clear my way before me. A hedge not up my way, but the ways of mine enemy. Good plan, said Arlene. God's plan. She touched my arm and I felt relaxed instead of tense. Albert, what if I told you I'd be willing to study your religion to see what it's about? I wasn't expecting that. Why would you do that? I asked, probably too suspicious. In the Marines, I got too used to being sucker punched by anti-religious bigots. I'm not promising to convert or anything, she told me. But I care about you, Albert. You believe in these things, and 
I want to understand. Cool, I said, but I was still suspicious of her motives. She dropped the other shoe. So, if I'm willing to study what you believe, would you be willing to relax a little and we could get together? I'd expected more subtlety from someone as intelligent as Arlene, but then again, Marines were not famous for an indirect approach. I had to close my eyes before shaking my head. I couldn't make the word no come out. I don't mean to make you uncomfortable, said Arlene. You may mean the best, I told her, but it doesn't matter what we do or say. Unless we're married, we can't make love. You mean we can't even fool around? She asked. I mean, we can't have sex together unless we're married. I could tell by her expression I was a more surprising phenomenon than the spider mind. You're kidding, she said. Not even touching? Not sexual touching. I wished she'd let up. She looked away from me, almost shyly. I'm only talking about a little fun. I tried a new trick. How can you think of fun when the world is dying? Seems like a good time to me, she said. We could use a break. Arlene, any sex outside of marriage is fornication. Even just touching. That kind of touching. The sin is in the thought. She mumbled something. I could have sworn she asked, How about inside marriage? But she turned away and pretended she hadn't spoken. I suppose Arlene was as freaked about the thought as I was. I didn't think I was making the best possible case for my faith, but... God isn't about winning a popularity contest. He doesn't have to. Albert, if you ever feel differently, I'll be there for you. I could tell she'd run out of things to say. At this moment, I probably seemed more alien than a steam demon or a bony. Fortunately, the rest break was over. I pointed to my watch and Arlene nodded. We could return to the far less dangerous territory of fighting monsters in hell. At least I knew what to expect from them. Nothing else stood between us and the radio shack except the corpses of some dead dogs. We broke into the abandoned store, kicking in the inadequately padlocked door. We used our day-night goggles to hunt through the darkness, not wanting to use a betraying light. A number of large spider webs were spun across a wall of boom boxes, proof that one Earth life form might survive the invasion unchanged. I was surprised the store didn't seem to have been looted, but then, what for? We should be able to find the jacks for Jill, said Arlene, who giggled right afterward. It took me a moment to realize what was funny. She was right, though. In the store's unlooted condition, we found the jacks very quickly. She pocketed them and headed for the front of the store, but stopped at a counter. Something had caught her eye. I couldn't see what. I need to ask you a question, she said. Ask away. Do you love someone? That's a very personal question. That's why I'm asking. She followed up. Do you? She deserved an answer. Yes, but she's dead. You never made love to her? She died before we married. Thank you for telling me, she said. I'm not trying to probe you, Albert. I've succeeded in revealing too much of myself. Now, let's get back before I say something else stupid. She went out the door and I glanced at the counter to see a demo music CD of Golden Oldies, led off by Carly Simon singing Nobody Does It Better. I'd never heard the song, but I could imagine the subject matter. Jesus help us. Was this a divine retribution? I shuddered. I hadn't seen any rainbows since the invasion. We didn't exchange another word on the way back. 
Her expression was grim, hard. She was probably angry with herself for opening up to me without finding out how first I really felt. Non-religious people usually had this trouble with us. We really meant it. No wonder we came off like nuts. And how could I tell Arlene that she was probably allergic to nuts?